cancer cells operate in a significantly different manner to normal, healthy human cells. Whilst that's a serious problem when it takes place inside the human body, a different manner of operation can be a significant advantage to medical research. Probably the most important cancer cells in the world belong to Henrietta Lacks, who died of cervical cancer in 1951. But before she died, some of the cancer cells from her body were grown artificially. These cells multiplied and the descendants of those same cells are still being used in scientific experiments, saving millions of lives decades after the death of Henrietta Lacks. These cells take their name from the first two letters of the names of the original owner, now known as Hella. So how are these cells still alive and what makes them important to medical research? And whilst cancer cells normally grow and multiply far faster than normal healthy cells, the Hella cells multiply even faster. Additionally, the Hella cells have what's known as active version of telomerase. If you imagine a strand of DNA as a shoelace, and telomeres the aglet or the plastic-like covering on the end of the shoelace. When that strand of DNA is copied, it starts copying in the middle of the strand. The telomeres at the very end of the DNA don't get copied. So you end up with a slightly shorter strand of DNA each time it's copied until it reaches its limit. This DNA shortening is one of the key processes behind aging. But in the case of Heller, the telomerase replaces the tips of the DNA, meaning that the strands can reproduce an infinite number of times and not show this sign of shortening sign of aging. However, since the cells are continually growing and dividing, they're also evolving with each generation, likely to be one or two mutations of the DNA of each cell. The majority of the cell, however, contains the vast majority of Henrietta Lacks DNA. So it's this cellular DNA which is important to medical research. The first disease that Heller cells were used to study was that of polio. The Heller cells, which now had none of the normal defence mechanisms of the human body, were exposed to the polio virus, they would contract the virus, then die as a result. This clear vulnerability to polio and other diseases made that testing for possible cures was a great deal easier. Any possible cure or treatment could be applied to the cells without endangering humans or animals in medical trials. Results could be swiftly and clearly seen without too many complicating factors in between. In the case of polio, an inert form of the polio virus was tested on the Heller cells. Since the Heller cells didn't contract the polio virus and die, it followed that cells in normal human body would also wouldn't contract polio if exposed to the inert form of the virus. After use in the treatment of polio, Heller cells have been used to identify ways of safely freezing and storing cells, effects of radiation, deep sea pressure, HIV, Parkinson's, flu, haemophilia, and many, many, many more conditions. If it hadn't been for the Heller cells, research time spent in seeking cures or treatments would be considerably longer involved more testing on humans and animals. However, it's not perfect. The Heller cells were taken from Henrietta without either her or her family's knowledge or consent. Whilst it's normal practice for the time, it has since raised some ethical questions about the use of Heller cells. Many of these have since been resolved with contact with the family. In addition, because the cells are cancerous, they're not a perfect match for human cells. And because their ability to grow and multiply, they've been responsible for some cross-contamination in some laboratory experiments. But since the Heller genome has now been mapped, most of these issues are relatively easily resolved. But putting all this together, Henrietta Lacks is probably the most important woman in medical science. If she never knew it in her lifetime, she never studied medicine.